Hey everyone, it's November 2nd, which means it's the second day in Unreal November. So I've decided all the videos I do from here on out are just going to be done in Unreal Blueprints. We're not going to flip-flop programs, we're going to just keep it on one track. So, to get things started, I just right-click, open up the blueprint for the uh, vehicle here. And the first thing I'm going to do is click on the mesh, and we're going to go Add Component, and we're going to add a thruster component okay and we're gonna move it back we're gonna move it back there we go okay and while it's selected we're gonna add in an arrow component okay and we're gonna make it purple okay now we're gonna go physics thruster and we're going to grab that and we're just gonna rotate it 180 degrees bring it in a little tighter to the buggy here and that'll just make the thruster push the car as opposed to try and pull it backwards. And compile that event graph. Okay, so one thing I'm gonna do is get rid of this reset VR device. We're not working in virtual reality, so it really doesn't matter. And what we'll do now is we're gonna search for an input and we'll go down to input here. And we'll do this the cheap and easy way. We're gonna make it work off of the E key. So this is not normally how you set up your controls for your game. We're just going to be doing this for the um, sake of simplicity in this tutorial. So we're going to grab the physics thruster and we're going to bring it in and we are going to go to set active. Boom, set active and we're going to make sure that's set to true and we're going to copy, paste, drag down and we're going to set that one to untrue. So while you're pressing the E key it's going to set the physics thruster to active and while the E key is released it's going to set the physics thruster to inactive and we're going to go compile and now one thing for the physics thruster here to note is that we need to give it a decent number so we'll go with uh, 100,000 million we'll go with a million um, cause that sounds like a good number to me and we're just going to we're just going to put this in here so I don't make that mistake that I made last time. And one more thing that I should change is if I go vehicle blueprint, viewport, you'll notice there is engine loop queue. Um, that's going to make noise during this tutorial. So only for sake of tutorial are we getting rid of it. Um, event graph. Uh, I see. So the audio, we're just going to delete that node. Boom. So the error it was kicking up there was it was looking for a component that no longer existed. The reason it no longer existed is because you just watched me delete it. And I just deleted the node connecting to it and everything was fine after. So we've compiled it, no errors, good to go. Now when I hit play, we don't have a sound to worry about. But what we do have to worry about is a little bug that we're going to fix, and I'll show you how to fix it. We have to go to settings, and we have to go to project settings. Then we have to scroll down to input, and on our axis mapping, which is just your forward, left, right, up, down, all that movement, get rid of these generic USB controllers, and same thing on the move right. Uh, for whatever reason, it messes up. I don't know what the reason is, but you'll see now when I hit play, uh, the car's not moving on its own. Okay. So just to reiterate, because setting the controls might have jarred some of you, we put in an E key, which sets the physics thruster to be active while pressed, and also the physics thruster will be inactive while the E key is released. So again, I'll just hop in. So this is it, normal acceleration, right? And here it is with the thruster acceleration. You can see it moves quite a bit faster now, and we're gonna bounce off this invisible wall here. Awesome, that's great. But it's kind of hard to tell um, when the thruster is active. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into viewport, and we're going to add in a point light. Okay, and point light's just gonna get dragged back here. Something like that, that's cool. Uh, red, red's a good color for boost. Awesome, compile, good to go. 
Now, now that it's added in, you know what? I can do something here. So you should really name your components um, something that I can't say I always do. I'm always good about, but we're going to do it here. And we're going to go to boost light. Now we're just going to make one word because why not? And we're going to drag boost light in. And from there, we are going to do set visibility. And we did this in the last tutorial, so this should uh, this should be familiar to any of you who watched the last video. And we have to set it to true. And again, control C, control V, and we're going to drag over and set visibility to false. Now there's going to be a problem when I compile it, and I'll show you what that problem is. When I start, the boost light is already on. And when I press and when I press E, the boost light is on while I'm pressing E, but it goes away and doesn't come back. So how do we fix that? It's really easy. We're going to go into viewport and we're just going to click on boost light on the left here and just type in viz to bring up visibility and this will turn off the initial visibility meaning the visibility for the light is controlled strictly in the blueprints okay so we're going we're boosting we've got boost of the light that's a good start but let's take it a step further so what we're going to do uh, back in viewport select the mesh. You can select the mesh by clicking on the mesh or clicking here for the mesh, doesn't really matter. And we are going to add in another thruster. Okay, so here's the thruster and we're going to call this jump boost. Right? And with jump boost selected, we're going to add a component. We're going to go with arrow. So again, we can see which way it is facing. And we're going to change the color of this to be a lighter purple. And we're going to take jump boost we're going to rotate it 90 degrees so that it's facing straight down and for the strength um what do we want to do for strength here did a hundred thousand no we did a million last time so let's do 10 million uh just so it can lift the weight of the car is that a smart move we'll find out i guess trial and error right so we're here we have a regular boost and we haven't set any code to make it use the jump boost yet. So we'll do that real easy. We're going to go control C, control V. This will be the set active. And we're going to do input, 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 keyboard, keyboard events. And we're going to go to C and pressed and released. Same as. <clears throat> Same as what we have up here, so that when C is pressed, it's active. When C is not being pressed, it is not active. Now, we're going to bring in our jump boost. I'll just show you guys something here. You can just drag off of this node twice and set it to two different sets of nodes. Um, it's just two different ways of organizing your code. It's really up to you how you want to do it. There's use cases for both. One's not necessarily better than the other. And now when I compile that, boom, we're in, we're moving, we're boosting forward, and now we can jump boost and fly around and probably end up, oh no, I thought we were going to end up on the wrong, uh, yeah, on our roof there like we did there. But you can see we've got a jump boost. Uh, maybe what I'll do is take off a zero. And change that to a 5. So we're kind of cutting it in half. Well, we are cutting it in half. That just makes it a little less wild. Maybe we'll just set it to a million. I don't know if a million will actually lift up the car, though. With physics and boosters and all that, or with the... Uh, with physics thrusters and impulse radiuses, it's kind of a trial and error thing. So as you can see... Millions not actually enough to lift the buggy off the ground. A couple ways we can fix that, but I think the for sake of time here uh, and not going back seven times to fix one thing, we'll just meet in the middle roughly. There we go. So it's a little bit more of a controlled jump, which is fine. And we're gonna whoops, <laughs> we're gonna want to add in a light just like we have for our boost light here. So that when we do use our jump, we 
um, we basically know or we can tell our user that they are using their jump. So a good way to do this is to copy what we have above and we'll be setting the visibility of a light that we are going to add in. So again, I'm going to add component and we'll add in a point light. Point lights are nice, easy, and to the point. See what I did there? I know, I hate myself for it too. That's okay. So we've got our point light, it's set. We're going to drag it down and we're just going to increase the intensity and increase the radius so that you guys can see it a lot easier. Uh, compile that, go into the event graph here. Okay, and we need, so we're actually going to rename that point light, um, which is something I should have done right off the bat. And we're going to call it the jump light. Nice and easy. And drag in jump light here. And again, we'll just double this up. Whoops. There we go. We'll just double this up. To me, it's not as nice and neat as the other method, but it doesn't really matter. That's fine. Uh, so yeah, basically now what we're doing is after it sets the thruster, it'll set the jump light to be visible. And again, when it sets the thruster to be off, it'll set it to uh, turn off the light as well. And we're gonna hit compile. And one more thing we should do, is if we don't do this, uh, so click on jump light, right? And we're gonna just type in visibility. And by default, the visibility is on, and we don't want that because if we were to play the game, we would see that light initially, and we only wanna see that light when we're hitting the button. So we go play, and as you can see, there's our forward boost. And when I boost up, you can see we have the jump light. And the jump light's actually clipping into the floor a little bit. So I'm gonna fix that. Quickest way to fix that is to bring it up, which is what I should have done in the first place. We'll just put it right in the buggy. Why not? Why not? All right. So now when I click, there you go. Now you can really see that we're boosting, right? And you can feather it. You could probably just drive with boost if you really wanted. Oh, we can do flips. One thing about the boost though, is it will not move us once we're on our roof. And to do a recovery thruster or something like that is a little bit more involved for this tutorial. So I don't think we will do it, but we'll give this another quick driving demo here. So we're gonna use E to go through the loop. Oh, we missed the loop, but we're going fast enough that we would have made it. And we're just kind of going all over the place. All right, we'll go for this one over here. Oh, oh, are we gonna make it? There we go, we made it. So as you can see, we can tell when we're boosting and we can tell when we're jumping. And using lights and stuff like that or even material changes is a good way to let your user know that they are actually pressing the key and they get instant feedback. Especially on something like the jump here where you can see the, the buggy only really moves a little bit but with that light coming on, you can tell right away that you've pressed the C key and you haven't missed it. Uh, normally you'd have like some sort of visual effect there uh, linked up. You wouldn't just use a light bulb, but uh, for the purpose of this tutorial, it works just fine. So I hope you guys found that interesting and found it useful and you're starting to understand a little bit more of the things you can do with Unreal Blueprints. Um, this is just another basic tutorial. Uh, maybe in the last 10 videos or something like that, I'll get into stuff that's a little bit more advanced. Uh, but for now, I just kind of want to get you guys thinking, um, kind of think of things you can do with blueprints, even just with these set nodes, set visibility, set active, all that stuff. So if you have any ideas, um, definitely leave it in a comment or message me or do something. And I will do my best to make a video um, showing you how to do whatever it is you want to see. I'm trying to keep these beginner friendly for at least the first 20 and then maybe on the, like I said, last 10. We'll change it up a little bit and maybe get a bit more advanced. Uh, so hope you guys found that useful. Uh, that's all for me for now, and uh, take it easy.